Hey, it's Ella from Spline. We are so excited to see all of these amazing shape blend designs come and pop up in the Spline community. You guys are on fire using this new feature. So today we have a new shape blend tutorial for you and we're going to guide you through creating this kind of watery design. All right, let's get started. So first for this design, we need to create our abstract water shape. The first thing you can do is click up here in the top toolbar and we're going to select shape blend. Now let's add some spheres. Now I'm going to start just placing these around building out my composition. Uh, maybe one here and some over here and another one here. And as we go, we can adjust the size and scale them down. You can use shift plus option plus drag to scale down your object. Or if you're using a Windows computer, you got to use shift, alt, and drag. But if you prefer to be more precise with your values, you can always click on your sphere and go over here to the right hand panel and adjust the size. Now I'm going to just play around here with the composition a bit more, changing the scale of some of these spheres. All right, now I'm happy with the amount of spheres and their sizes in my composition. Now we can head over here and click on our shape blend group. And then in the right panel, let's adjust the resolution and the blending level. Make sure to experiment and find the amount of blending that suits you best. Now let's continue on. We're going to create that transparent material. Since we're working with transparency, it's a good idea to have some background elements to enhance that effect. So we can see the element through the object that we're applying our transparency to. And this helps make it more visually interesting. These don't have to be a shape blend object. They can just be a classic primitive. So here I've tried adding a few spheres. Some of them have some solid colors or you can try using gradients. For this water texture, a matte cap layer is going to give us that nice and glossy shine. So it is a very important material you do not want to skip. Select one from the spline library, but if you have one that you would like to upload, you can do that as well. Set the opacity to 60. Now let's adjust the blend mode here to screen. In lighting, set it to fog and let's adjust the shininess and change the blend mode to screen. And now we can add a glass layer. For the glass layer settings, we're going to set the opacity to 90, blur to 2, thickness to 280. Okay, cool, that's it for the glass layer. And now it's time to add a Fresnel layer. Let's open up the Fresnel layer and what I did next is I changed the color to black And then I customize the additional parameters like the bias, scale, intensity, and the factor. Play around with this to get your desired result. I'm going to set the opacity to 40 so it's not as strong. Let's change the blending mode here to overlay. And there you go, you have that beautiful glossy and transparent material. But I always like to encourage you all to feel free to experiment with these settings, see what works for you, see the changes that you can make to really personalize your own designs. And a quick tip, this is another way that you can fill out your design. This is using the cloner tool. Basically, you wanna select one of your objects, then scroll down here to the cloner tool and we can turn this on and we can use, let's say, grid type, 
this is a fun way to explore making different types of compositions. So I encourage you to give that a try. Now let's move into making this a little more interactive. Something you can do is take your design even further by adding it to interactions or animations. We are going to do a quick animation with these clones. You can create a second state and enable randomness and change the movement settings between each state. Next, I'll add a start event, adjust the states, And for the timing here, let's set this to 10 seconds. Finally, I'll loop it to infinite and the cycle to ping pong. Now let's see how to create an interaction where these water shapes follow my cursor. For this, we are going to use the follow event. Let's add two shape blends. In this case, I'll add two spheres. Now let's add the follow event to one of the spheres. And switch to play mode. As you can see, just like that, the sphere is now following our cursor. When it comes in contact with the other shape blend shapes, both the shapes and materials blend together, creating this amazing and very interesting interaction. We can adjust the damping here as well. So if you add more damping, this will make the effect a bit slower and more smoother. A lower value will make it faster and more abrupt. So let's set this to 20 instead of one. And see, there you have it. So now we can make this follow event a little more epic by having more spheres follow each other, creating this tailing effect. First thing we need to do is we're going to create our other spheres. So let's just do that. Do, 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 do. Next, I'm going to adjust the size of each sphere, making each one slightly smaller than the previous one. And let's stay organized. Let's identify each of these objects as drops because they look like water droplets. And I'm going to add a number next to each of them. So I'll name one drop one, drop two, drop three, drop four, and drop five respectively. This is going to make it so much easier later on as we need to reference them when we are applying our follow event to each. So now let's set up the follow event. For drop one, I'm going to add our follow event and set the target to cursor. Then I'll set the plane to align with camera and setting that damping to 20. Now for drop two, let's add a follow event again. And in target, instead of the cursor, let's select drop one. For this time, we are going to set 15 on the damping. The lower the damping, remember, makes the motion faster and snappier. And I bet you're catching on to the idea here. We are going to repeat the same process for the remaining shapes. And here's a pro tip. Once you set up your first drop, you can always copy and paste the follow event and simply adjust the target for each sphere. This will save you a ton of time. So for drop three, set it to drop two as the target. For, for drop four, we're gonna set drop three to the target. Drop five, we'll have drop four set as the target. And you can always explore the damping value for each of the drops to find the effect that works best for you. All right, and that's basically it. Now, if we switch to play mode, you can see that this new following interaction is going to affect everything in our scene, all of the shape blend objects and all of their materials, creating this really beautiful and dynamic effect. And let's go on a little side quest here. I wanna quickly talk to you about animated turntables. If you turn this on, this is a fun way to show off your shape blended objects or really any 3D design that you make that you want to spin 360 degrees around. All you need to do is here in the export under play settings, you can enable animated turntable. 
Then here you can adjust the direction and speed of the spin. Once you switch to play mode, you'll see how this adds this nice rotation animation to your scene, making it that much more dynamic or visually appealing. Now once your design is ready to go, you can integrate any spline design into Framer, Wix, Shopify, Webflow, TypeDream, and more. Most web builders support our code-free exports. For a deeper dive on integrating 3D from Spline into your web projects, check out the integration section of the Spline docs. This has a list of step-by-step -step guides on how to code-free integrate your Spline 3D into a variety of different web builders, so make sure to check that out. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Now we know how to make this beautiful watery shape blend effect in Spline. Don't forget to explore more amazing designs that spine designers are uploading every day into the spine community. We absolutely love seeing your creativity. It inspires us so very much. So thank you for contributing. If you're looking for inspiration, the spine community is definitely a great place to check out. Let us know in the comments what you would like to see in our next tutorial. We are planning some new tutorials for 2025 and would love to know your opinion. All right, thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Happy designing.